Really, boys and girls, look, there's like a guy here, and he's wearing somehow he got the knight's cross, and then there's another guy here, and then there's another guy, there's like nine million of them, yeah, this is the bad news, you see, I downloaded Wild Resistance, because... That's what you're supposed to do now, because everyone else did, and I didn't. But that deleted my old game. So, we're going to have to start all over again. And, you know, what I was thinking is that, you know, I'm just thinking that we should just play as Hitler again. And But, you know, at the same time, I feel like taking the over the world for communism. So, there's Hitler, there's communism... Which way are we supposed to go? You know? And I'm already kind of like clicking. And we need to do Iron Man. And I don't want historical focuses because those are shit. So, you know. We're going to save this as Iron Man German Reich. I guess. But, you know, in this game I'm thinking that we... We might see fascist for a little bit longer, and then I was thinking about switching to communism. You know, and it's... We might as well get Thalman. We might as well get Peak. We might as well get Milka. You know, all those, like, famous East Germans that we don't really talk about nowadays. You know, and... Whenever, whenever anyone ever thinks about Germany, they always think of the Nazis. And they don't think about, like, the Stasi, you know, who basically put the Gestapo to shame. I mean, I remember I was like, you know, Weisel, the, you know, the guy that wrote Night, he said that, like, for all essential purposes... The Stasi were worse than the Gestapo. Just simply because there were more of them and they were ultimately, I guess, quote unquote, better at their job. So, you know, we're going to be like fascists for a while, gobble up some land, and then after that, you know, what I'm thinking is that we go fascist and. Not go fascist, we're fascists. I mean, you know, go. Maybe we could start by taking over Denmark. You know, we haven't t we haven't played with. See, Denmark has no nothing worthwhile there. It has nothing worthwhile over there. But you know, it's we could like go over in these countries and just freeze. But what I was thinking about doing even better, just taking over the Netherlands first. You know, usually in Germany you have like one free war at the beginning. And I'm thinking that we take over the Dutch. And then if we get lucky, we could probably take over Poland. Because I don't think we get that much world tension for taking over the sovereign nation of the Netherlands. So as always, with military factories, we need lots of them. Because... And we we get free military factories, and that's just you know if you like saw my last campaign, our main like limiting factor was real I mean it's that I was just clueless and didn't know what I was doing, and I'm pretty much approaching this game in the same manner. The only thing I'm good at is not learning from my mistakes. So, in that aspect. We got need six rubber. Look at all that rubber that we need. And I was going, oh, no, no, no. You see, we can't do that because we're going to invade those people. And we can get some, some from my good friends in Siam. Go up here. Get these things. I like their mind verifier. You know, everything's slightly changed now. I mean, the, you know, the, we have these little things now. You know, I haven't really explored this that much. 
you know, we need these because, well, there's no point in killing people if we don't have to. And, you know, on PS, we're not going to, you know, last time we played with the Democrats, the Democratic Germany, and we clearly saw, like, something needed to be improved because I was taking over all this land and Britain wanted to ally me and it just didn't you know if you're normally democratic and you're just like taking over the world and eventually people are going to be angry with you so regardless the Furiaris plan Ah, uh, don't. Alright, we gotta double click to get all these. Oh, yeah, we only have one of these. Alright. Well, we did that completely wrong. Should be doing it the other way. Mainly. Double clicking. Normal depressing infantry divisions. And making an army with them. Yes. Alright. For some... Okay. Because I was an idiot. And you're going to go to that army. You're going to be my motorized army. This is going to be my foot soldier army. Things are slim right now in the beginning. So I only have two armies. And I need to find out where my panzer units ran off to. and So that way I could use them. Here they are. And these could go here. Click to select. We did that wrong. Yella befella. There we go. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm doing this wrong, obviously. Okay. This. Shift click. Shift click. Shift click. I'm rushing a little bit. Click. Good. Uh, two. Okay, here's my cavalry unit. Here's my Gebirgs unit. And. Wrong button. Right click, not left click. I mean, I'm humiliating myself terribly at the beginning of this Let's Play. You know, my hopes of turning this country to the gloriousness of communism. Now, a lot of people are against communism. You know, they think that we should be ruled by capitalist overlords. And the capitalist overlords should, or capitalist overlords somehow deserve it. Which in some ways is truth, you know, it's, you know, but at the same time, I kind of like the concept of, like, everyone are comrades, everyone supporting each other, and, you know, and it's, if I was born in... The Soviet Union uh, would definitely be drinking the Kool-Aid big time. At least, you know, before before you get older and cynical and you just realize that it's not what it cracked up to be. I'm going to build some armored cars. As you can see, with all this stuff's completely different because clearly I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And... We have an armored cars being produced, which is good. You can never have too many armored cars. And obviously, those are for the garrison units. So that way, you know, when they're wandering around doing their garrison thing, they're not, you know, things are not so bad.
you know, and it, you know if things are not so bad with them, you know, which is good because you know it's if you're a gar if you're garrison, I mean, if you're garrisoning, say, Denmark. I'd rather be in a armored car than on a horse. Even if it costs my country slightly more to, you know, put me in that armored car. You know, especially if, I mean, I wouldn't really be that all out excited to be part of a fascist dictatorship. But if I was told later on, you know, after a couple of years, I'll be our country is going to be going communist, then, then, you know, I would su support it. Because, you know, eventually, you know, I'd be communist. And, I mean, at least I'd feel a little bit more, what's the hell is this thing? Okay. So I am not doing its job. Why aren't you doing your job, I am? I want rubber. And you're not giving me said rubber. But actually, I don't really care because I have plenty to spare. But, you know, it's... I don't know. If I had a choice of being... Taking a bullet for Nazi Germany or, like, communism, I'd probably rather take a bullet for communism. And deep down inside, I think most people would think the same way. Are we going to create the Abwehr? Why not? I mean, I don't even know what the... What the hell are these things? And obviously, they're not going to be the Geheimstasspolizei. But, you know, that makes sense if I'm the Abwehr. Canaris actually kind of did his job, too. You know, pretty much anyone that's against Canaris should just suck a lemon for all I care. Better man than I was. But, I'm thinking about taking over these people. Look at this guy. Do you kind of, like, trust him? Because I sure as hell don't. I don't know what he's up to. I'm sure Canaris isn't sure what he's up to. And... I just... Every single passing day, I'm just more and more worried about... You know... What... You know what they're gonna do to me you know and in that situation I think you know at least this way too you know we'll be getting all their goodies in Siam and Indonesia you know it's not Indonesia yet but I mean if I had a choice of puppeting on them or not it'll just make sense to puppet them the only other thing I could think because you know once we do that we get all the rubber we want and we have all the oil we want so it just makes sense to go over there, puppet them, and then let the good times roll. The only other thing I can think of is Belgium and taking this rubber. You know, we'll get, but you know, we get way more rubber if we just do this Dutch thing. And if you think about it too, we get some steel, but frankly, Germany has plenty of steel. So it's gonna be like my last pride playthrough, but instead of attacking Poland, we're just gonna be attacking Netherlands and trying to be buddy buddy with the Soviets because I'm just afraid we're gonna have to do some dirty work eventually in Poland. So I'm thinking we attack Netherlands, make a U turn, and then go after the Poles. We have enough army equipment to make a unit. You... No! Cancel. Alright. And... Always, always proud to Hanoverians. Like 
list that could be decent, decent ones. I mean, obviously, Police Battalion 101 over here wasn't really that great. It's a book that I'm reading right now. It's actually quite sad. Meanwhile, we could take care of these things. Krieg's Marine. It's, they don't really give you much choice. I don't really want a battleship guy. He's Craven, which I don't think he is. He's old guard. Gunter Lunchens. Frankly, it's probably better than Donut than Raider, but when I'm been actually kind of interesting listening to like these people's arguments, like arguing who deserves that. Oh, Donut should have level four. Oh no, he should have level five. You know, I'm pretty sure they got pretty heated. That might actually be kind of interesting to, like, listen to, you know? So here we are, just clicking time away. Waiting to get 50 political points. As we see here. Hmm, are we still clicking? No, we're not clicking. Damn it. Really, just wanted to get rid of these people just to speed things up, but I actually don't like the people. I mean, it's just, it looks, it looks more like a strategy game if you just had the uh, units. Otherwise, I just feel like I'm playing 10 soldiers. But, you know, that's just the way the world works. Good thing with the Netherlands too, we get Curacao and we get Suriname. I didn't even check those places out, what they're like. Head over here. Yeah, look at that. Suriname. Resources. What do we have in Suriname anyway? We have plenty of aluminum. And that's it. And we got oil in Trinidad. I like this oil in Trinidad, but apparently, oh, we got it in Curacao. We have nice, beautiful oil in Curacao. And we're going to be getting that soon. Now, that should mean it's, it's called a war for oil. If you, uh, historically, it's Probably the two best campaigns to look up is the first Gulf War and the second Gulf War, also known as the occupation of Iraq. And you'll see that people, like higher ups, have no problem killing large swaths of people for oil. And in that situation, it's fully appropriate and expected to bring the flower of our youth over the hills of. Netherlands to get that said oil because you know god forbid we need it I need it you need it we all need it the sad thing of course is that we can't go to we can't really attack the southern part of it because of the Rhineland okay good there we go I mean, obviously, we're gonna have to. We are gonna be bringing Guderian into into the mess as well, just simply because I don't know a better thing to do. And just what I mean, it's for the most part. I really think like drawing army plan should actually have some strategy behind it. In reality, I just feel like it's like almost superfluous. You know, it's, we could like make some sort of strategy to s smash some of the, the remaining Netherlands troops and like surround them and force them against, you know, the border of 
North Sea, that's my Russian over here, okay, so this is mostly Plains area. Well, pretty much like normal, I'm probably just going to be focusing on just expanding the front, because strategically that makes the most sense. After all, because we outnumber them a lot. So, we have 280 planes here, which is enough. Because once again, I don't know how many they have, but I'm assuming it's not as much. So with these guys, we've got four of these, which is good. Because I want to get this second one up here. Some men over here. Should help those 400 guys out, big time. So now we have two, and we have enough money to begin fabricating. I'm getting a little hold of my horses here. Because now we have to justify a war goal against these bloody idiots. And I really think the Fry's land, Fry land should be mine. And I'm pretty sure everyone agrees with that because, after all, Frisian is, well, pretty much Dutch is closely related to Germany when it comes to language. Abwehr is done. But I can't really afford to spend any more stuff at the present moment. That was a kind of mean it's never been to the Netherlands. I actually kind of want to. I mean, I think we could have learned a lot of it simply because we did ruin large numbers of lives on the war on drugs. And I think their policy, I don't know if they finally made it legal, but originally, pretty much throughout all of its existence, its pot's been illegal in the Netherlands and they just don't enforce it. And pretty much we spent the money, we blew our money on the war on drugs, building prisons and ruining people's lives. And they spent money on, I don't know, helping people's health care. And I ultimately think spending money on people's well-being is better than hurting people into prisons. Especially the vast majority of them are of a different color skin than you, but once again, that's life. People make mistakes in life, and then you just have to move forward. So we're fabricating a claim on these bloody people, and it's going to be ready on October. So in October, we're going to have no choice at this present moment but to go to war to protect ourselves against the Netherlands. The good thing, of course, is that we're going to have plenty of oil at the end. We'll actually have some rubber, too, coming from over in Indonesia. I just don't know if we could... I doubt we're going to be able to annex them outright, but... You know, the solution is just... You know, pretty much the only thing we could really do is then just try to play with the uh, puppeting features of it. You know, just to get all our oil. Well, we'll get all the oil from Curacao. And we'll get a rubber from the Indonesians. And as long as we don't go to war against Britain, we should be fine. You know, I have, I mean, I didn't. You know, it's, you know, it's kind of cowardly not to go to war against Britain, but it's not the wisest thing to do if we, actually, if we go to war against Britain, it's not the end of the world simply just because, well, we'll be going communist and our best friend will be to our east then. And, you know, I hope to interject this wonderful Let's play with nice, beautiful, exciting little tidbits about life in East Germany. Where I've never been to East Germany. 
been to Frankfurt and München, and that's it. But you know, it's I I actually wouldn't want to live in East Germany. So I live in a country where I could be free. And for the time being, America is okay. It's just pretty much wherever you, wherever anyone is, they always think the grass is clean, greener on the other side of the fence. So here we are. After that, I'm gonna have to fabricate against Poland. But I just don't know, like what the war tension score is because I really want to be able to get a second war in before you had to begin strategizing. Ultimately, if we do the Gulf group, obviously it's going to be a lot easier to invade Belgium and France if we already have a springboard in the Netherlands. It'll be help our economy a lot if we say have oil. So here we are just scheming on the Netherlands. I mean but you know just overall just uh in East Germany Following World War II, Germany was carved up into four zones. The American zone down here, the British zone up there. The French had their own little zone over here. And the Soviets got the eastern chunk of it. And later on, the Soviets granted their little chunk independence. And that's what East Germany was. And they excelled in... They actually had the best economy of all of the Soviet bloc. So, I mean, it's... Still, you can't really uh, diss them for that. But they won a lot of Olympic medals through cheating. They're good at building walls. And... I mean, I'm not sure it wasn't a great life, but as long as... You weren't like a really bad dissident. You probably were able to eke out something of a living. I'm not really sure. You know, overall, too, I just don't know how... Like, how much freedom he actually had. Because, you know, everyone makes it here, at least in America. Or you hear stories that, like, you can't choose your job. You can't choose where you're going to work. You can't choose who you're going to marry. You can't choose anything. In the reality, that's probably there's probably some truth to that. You know, just overall, the truth is like usually if you listen to two people arguing, like communist propaganda on one end and Fox News on the other end, usually the truth is somewhere in the middle. But here we are, screaming against these nuts. I'm just gonna pause the recording of for a little bit. And I'll be...